What is up Shark Army, it's your boy Shark and welcome back to another Stardew Valley Mod Showcase. That is right, we are in November and it's time for another showcase of some wonderful mods. The ones that are the most popular, the ones that are trending right now in November. We did one last month in October and we have got some cracking mods to show off today. Some awesome mods, I've installed them all into the game. We're going to go through them, the ones that are popular right now. Show you what people are downloading and playing the most. What mods are getting installed a lot recently. And this is going to be a fun video, so make sure you hit the like button and let's get straight into it. So the first mod I want to show straight away, you probably heard it on the little intro there, is the music. I've changed all of the music in the game with the piano collective versions of the song. So the songs are the same, but they are the piano versions which are absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, if I turn this up... It is so relaxing. I love the music, the piano music. So that is a mod that is trending on the website right now. It just converts all of the original songs to the piano version. It's a little bit more relaxing, a little bit more slow and wind down, very much more chilled when you're playing on the farm. And as you can see as well, another mod, let me just turn this music off. Is the actual farm layout itself. Every time we do one of these mods, we always show off a new farm layout, and this is called the Tiny Mountain Farm. Now, this is a very, very small farm layout. As you can see, it's very perfect just for a one player. Not much space. If you don't want to do much farming, you're more focused on buildings or animals or stuff like that, then this is the layout for you. Of course, as you can see, we do get a little quarry on this farm as well, which is absolutely perfect. It's awesome. There's no pond or lake to fish on or anything to fill your watering can, so a well is going to be very important. But if you go onto this little minecart here, I am zoomed fully out so you can see the farm. This takes you to the top of the farm, and this has got a little kennel for a dog, a nice little pet area there. It's absolutely beautiful, obviously it's very messy right now, there's lots of trees and stuff like that. As you can see, we're knocking a few trees down with the bombs, and the, all of this grass is tillable. So actually, thinking of uh, the crops, if you want to plant seeds and stuff, all of this is tillable. It looks like it's grass, but it's not. You can dig over it, which is awesome if you do want to farm for crops, actually. So you are going to get lots of space for that. It is a gorgeous little map. And if you want to play solo and you don't want too much of a space, as you can see, the greenhouse is here. The layout of the little fruit bat cave there is awesome. We've got steps going up to the grandpa shrine. You can still go north of the map here. And if you want to go east into town as normal, you've got to go down here, up the steps and across. Very tiny, but very, very cute. Now, whilst we're on the farm, we'll talk about some other mods that we've got on here as well. One of them actually changing the layout inside of this cave. We've got uh, an extension. This is called Boogie's Farm Cave Expansion. So as you can see, it expands. It comes up into a bit more space here. So you can place lots of stuff in this little cave. So, for example, you can put some charcoal kilns in there or kegs or preserve jars, whatever you want. You can obviously use this as an extra space to store some things and craft some stuff, which is very, very nice. And there is also another mod called the Boogies Cellar Expansion. So this also expands the cellar, which I'll have to go into another save file to show you. But this is awesome. So here we are. We are on my original save file, year 25, and the first ever save file that I played through. If we go down here, as you can see, this is the basic cellar, but we now get a new area, which is a tillable soil. So it's like a greenhouse. So if you want to put all of your casks and uh, your things to age your cheese and your wine, well, you can actually grow some things here in this tillable soil. If you want to age some ancient fruit wine, you can plant some ancient fruits in here. It works as a greenhouse. Get loads of kegs around the, the side to turn it into wine and then place it into the casks here to age it for iridium quality. So that's a very good production area for some big, huge money. And the next mod which is popular and trending right now is this thing here that you can see which looks like wine or juice, but it's not. It's actually cider. This is a cider press. This is a new crafting machine. As you can see, you just need 35 wood and one iron bar in order to craft it. And this will turn fruit into ciders. So I have already placed one in there. We've got cherry cider. I placed a cherry in there. I think it takes like 10 hours. So we can also make ale as well, not just cider. So if you put a fruit and some wheat in there, this is making orange ale, which is going to take 29 hours. So you can make fruit cider and of course, Ale, which is very very good to extend your money. I've got the item spawner here and these are all the ciders We've got Asian pear, we've got blackberry, cactus fruit, elderberry So some of the fruits here are from the new crops as well. We've got rhubarb, 
spice berry, a spiced apple cider, a star fruit cider, which sells for 700. So you can put star fruit in there, just not ancient fruit. So that looks like the best one to make for cider. And if you want to make ale, you can only do a lemon, lime, orange, yuzu, and pomelo. Oh, and grapefruit. Another mod we're going to showcase is the craftable prismatic shard. And here we go. The animation is a bit glitched because I do have a mod installed at the moment, which uh, is animated gems and stuff like that, but that needs updating. So the crafting recipe for the prismatic shard gets unlocked once you get to level 9 mining. In order to craft a prismatic shard, all you need is one of every colourful uh, mineral there. One ruby, which is red, of course, topaz. We've got the yellow pyrite, the malachite, which is the green one. They've got aquamarine and the amethyst. So one of each color, turn it into a prismatic shard. If you're struggling to find one in obviously the school cavern, which they are quite rare, you get a rare drop for this uh, prismatic shard. But you can now craft one yourself with all of those uh, minerals there for the ingredients, which are a lot more easier to find in the original mine compared to the prismatic shard, which I think is pretty cool. I can see why it is popular. So we are back on my original farm because there is another mod that I wanted to show you but in order to show this we need some water on the farm which obviously the new modded tiny mountain farm doesn't have one of these. So this mod is called aquatic plants. Obviously very easy to understand what this is. You can now plant aquatic plants around some water just like the rice. If you plant these seeds around some water by a free radius so up to here you can grow some aquatic plants. There is quite a lot. So as you can see on our inventory, these are all of the seeds, but we need to uh, obviously use the right season. So we have got flax seeds, which can be planted in summer. We've got bulrush, which is in summer as well. A lot of these are summer actually. We've got pampas grass, which is full. We've also got silver grass, which is full. And then for summer, we've got the pink lotus. We've got the papyrus. We've got the water hyacinth. We've got the white lotus, the water poppy, the water lily, and the duckweed, which is the only one we can plant in the season we are currently in, which is obviously spring. So let's grow a few of these and I'll show you how it looks so of course if it's near water it will look like this just like the rice and you can do it up to free radius you can walk through it you can walk on it it looks very awesome I can actually make this grow instantly with the the mod just to showcase what it looks like and there we go that is some duckweed we can harvest this of course Aquatic plants, very awesome. So it's no longer just rice that needs water. We've got some other things as well. I can imagine the lilies and the water poppies looking so good. But there we go. That is another trending popular mod right now. So now the rest of the mods, we can actually get off the farm and go into a bit more detail with these. We've got a few left and these are the more big mods. We've got rid of the small one. So let's go into the next one on the list. So as you can see, we've now got this flower border around the dialogue box on the NPCs when you talk to them which looks very pleasing on the eye. I mean, it's very simple, but it's popular, it's trending, people are downloading it. Sometimes the little mods are the best. There we go, Alex is all looking beautiful. And these change with the season as well. So in summer, they will be different flowers. In fall, there'll be like sunflowers, etc. So they are seasonal, which is it's quite nice. I do like it, it's a good little touch. It adds a little bit of something to the, uh, the dialogue boxes there. I can see why a lot of people like that mod. And here is the next mod, which is called the townies need food. So of course, on the help wanted request board, the NPCs will now ask for food requests. So meals, such as Pam right here, she's asking for some ash browns. I'd love some ash browns. Could someone in this town help me out and make me some? There is money in it for you. So you've got to go and cook and deliver food to the town as they are requesting food. So if you are a good chef and you've got all the recipes and you love cooking, this is nice to see that townies are requesting this on the Out Wanted board too. And she was going to give you 360 gold for this and she's going to be very happy. But the best thing about these quests as well, you get five days to do them, not three. So you get two days extended, of course, because it's quite tricky to cook. And these requests will not pop up unless you have the recipe. So it's not going to be asking for something that you've not got. So if you've unlocked the recipe, they will get requested on the board. So you've got five days to make this. We can go back to the farm, click in the kitchen. Let's see what we need for our hash brown. There we go. We just need one potato and one oil. I'm sure we've got some in the chests around. There we go. We've got one potato in this chest. We've got any oil? Oh, would you look at that? In the chest, I've already got some hash browns. Very awesome. But I do have some oil as well. So let's go find Pam and give her a wonderful hash browns. We will just wait for her to leave her house and we're going to greet her with some beautifully fresh <clears throat> cooked ash browns which have been in my chest for many years. She's going to love them. I probably cooked them in like year three. Twenty something years later, 
We're gonna give them to her. She's gonna love it. Pam, can you smell these beautiful ash browns? Look at them, they are steaming. They're still piping hot after 20 years. Who'd have thought? Oh, there's Penny. Oh, everyone's coming, apart from Pam. Where is she? Here she is, Pam. Look what I've got you. What you got there? Oh, this is for me? Thanks, Chris. I was reading the newspaper this morning, but then I got depressed. It's a rotten world, kid. Keep your head screwed on right, and you'll make it through in one piece. That's what my pappy always used to say. She's not wrong. So there we go. That is Townies Need Food, the mod where they will request food and cook dishes. So you have to get your cook on. You have to be a good chef and deliver food around the town. You are a takeaway delivery driver person you know what i mean let's get into the next mod and these two mods are awesome the first one being look at this marlon the adventurer is now real make marlon real he walks around the town as if he is a person i've always wanted this to happen in the game look at him he's doing his thing you can talk to him don't go sticking your nose into business that ain't, that ain't yours you can actually marry him and have him as your spouse which is awesome, you can work on his relationship. It's just nice to see Marlon actually walking around the town and not just being sat there behind that desk all the time. Let's give him the ancient sword. Okay, he doesn't like it. <laughs> We've got to learn about him, okay? We don't know what he likes or hates yet. But, of course, Gunther is the other person who is real. Make Gunther real, this is the mod, so it's make Marlon real and make Gunther real. Gunther, the guy who works in the museum, is real too. He'll be walking around, you can interact with him, you can see him do his daily stuff. They have their own routines. I'm not sure what they are yet, you'll have to learn about them. But he is not going to be sitting behind the desk all the time anymore, which is very, very good. I'll try and catch him, um, catch him out of the house, but obviously during this time he's going to be here. So we need him to, to walk out. Let's skip the time a little bit. Hey, no peeking down here, guys. This is the last mod that I want to show you. But shh, shh, you didn't see anything. We're waiting for Gunther. And here he is. But he's broken because I forgot to take off the NPC seasonal outfits. Obviously, the seasonal outfit mod where the outfit changes depending on the day and the season and the weather. This, sadly, breaks uh, Gunther when he's walking around. If you take this mod off, though, it does walk normally. He needs his normal outfit on, which is a shame. But, um, yeah... Here he is with his beautiful outfit on, but sadly, when he's walking, the animation's broke because it's interfering with that mod. But I, had, I did take it out last time and it worked absolutely fine. But there we go, he's walking around, he's now doing his own thing, I don't know what his routine is. He's the invisible man, don't mind him, you know, he, he likes to do things differently around here. He's going to the beach, interesting, at 7pm. I don't know what he's doing with his hands there either. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> he's a strange guy. Oh, look, look at this. So he's digging in the soil. Of course, this animation is using his original outfit, which is what it's meant to be. But he's trying to find artifacts and stuff like that in the sand. That is so good. What a mod. So it is the next day and the final mod to showcase, the big one that I want to showcase off. This is an expansion. Oh, the lightning has hit my floor. Great. And as you saw earlier by the museum, there is a new place that we can go. And this is called Escape to the East Scarp. So this mod is a new place you can enter. There's a few new NPCs, a few things that you can see. It's like a new little town. I believe it's like by the seaside, it's like a lighthouse and stuff like that. It looks very, very awesome. And this mod is trending. I've been seeing it a lot on the Nexus Mods website. And of course, all the NPCs that have been added as well. I believe there's three at the moment in this little place, but more are getting added, so I can't wait to see that. So this is just a little new area. Obviously, I don't think this works with the expanded mod. Stardew Valley Expanded. Here we are, look at this place. You can hear the seagulls already. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So the first house, as soon as you enter, is here. This is a little rundown cabin. Not sure who lives here. Looks very girly and pretty inside. We can enter that. Not sure who that person is just yet, but the house looks very nice. Look at this. They've got, is that some kind of pet? A tabby cat glares at you. She looks frightened. Better leave her alone. Oh my God. So we've got a little garden and look at this. You can pick some forage up. We've got a mussel. You can come down here and it's onto a little beach. I'd love to live here. We've got the things glistening in the water. You can do a bit of fishing. And what is this? East Scarp Swimming Beach. Enter the water between the posts only. Swimming at your own risk. No lifeguard on duty. No changing room facilities, but you can use this rock or just enter the water. So there you go. You walk past the rock. You get into your swimming outfit and we can come for a swim. And here we go. We can go for a swim on the beach. Absolutely beautiful. So you need to walk through these two posts and then as you walk in, you enter the water. So as you walk straight through there, you'll automatically put your outfit on. That's like the switch to activate the, the mod of swimming in the water. We've got a rock pool here on the beach. We'll have to check out some other houses and see if we can see the new NPCs as well. Oh, what's this? We've got a little cave. 
Oh my god, this mod is bigger than a fort. This should have been a video on itself. We've got some uh, little mining places here. Look at all this stuff, it's very beautiful. Lots of artifacts and resources to get. Oh, I love this. So you could probably do some fishing here as well. It looks awesome. But there we go, that's a little cave there. So we carry on on the beach, let's see what else is around. Oh my god, there's a lighthouse there. Look at that, that is beautiful. That is such a good animation and a very well designed building. Modders on Stardew Valley are incredible. We'll check out the lighthouse in a second, we'll leave that till the end. Let's go and have a little look around here. So if we go up from this first cabin we saw, there is a train track, or is that a minecart? So we can probably get here quite fast. Oh, there's another house here, look at these. It's like a little town. I love these style of the houses. Oh my god, this is huge. This is a big house. I don't think nobody's here yet. We'll have to find out. Obviously, the new NPCs will be getting added, so all these houses will be filled eventually, which is going to be so exciting. This one's to rent. You could actually live here, guys. So this is the thing with this game. You can actually move into here, and I'm sure eventually what they're working on is um, you can actually live on this bit, which will be so good. Got another empty cabin here. The family have not moved in yet, but apparently someone has already moved into this house. They've just not moved in fully. Okay, so there's a few houses here. Let's go up. Oh my god, there's a big truck here. You can hear animals inside. I wonder what they are. Let's enter this house and see who lives here. it has got to be someone here, right? Oh, here we go. So we have um, Jacob. Yes, sorry. I'd rather you didn't watch me work. It makes me self-conscious. So this, is he, is he a doctor or a professor or something? Okay, and this is also a parrot. Look at that, a big McCoy. Is this a, is this a vet? Sir Fluffelkins the first wrinkles his nose and regards you suspiciously. Is that a mouse? So if we go here, lots of pets in this house. It's like the pet detective. We've got a little cat on the chair. It looks like this chair's taken. Her ladyship princess midnight the third. Oh, there's some fish. Tiny colorful fish. This guy loves his pets. Look at this place. There's also a bedroom here. You're not good enough friends with Eloise, so he has a daughter. Jacob and Eloise. It's filled with woman's clothing, all neatly folded and packed with tissue paper. Either Dr. Jacob, so he's a doctor, has diverse tastes or they belonged, belonged to his wife. So his wife's no longer here, so it's just him and his daughter. Interesting. I wonder if we can find her later. Oh, there she is. Look, this is, uh, was Eloise? So there she is. Oh, she's very cute. The portraits and the designs of these characters are so good. It's like they're literally made for the game. I'm going to be an explorer one day. Maybe I'll even discover a new animal. So these two love animals. He is a doctor. Maybe he's like researching animals or something like that as well. So they're the two new people. There is one more and I believe they live in the lighthouse, which we're going to see. What is this? Is this a silo? Yes, an old silo. Converted into a house. Who could live here? Sadly, the door is locked. Somebody's converted the silo into a house. Wow. There is also a little forest as well, so you can get some trees. Okay, interesting. Let's go and check out the lighthouse, and that is the last person to see in this place and the last area as well. And here we go. Look at this. And there's the new person. Here is Beatrice. The light must be kept shining. It is not a job, but a calling I follow. So there we go. That is the lighthouse. She's obviously the lighthouse keeper. And look inside here. Wow. I love this place. So she runs the lighthouse. She keeps it on all the time. Can we actually go up there? Oh, the latch that leads to the lantern room is locked. Oh, that'd be so good if we get up top of there. So here we go, guys. That is Escape to the East Scarp, the biggest mod out of all of them. The one that adds a completely new little place to visit. Some new NPCs. I can see why this is popular. It fits the game so well. It's, it's as if it's meant to be. You can go swimming, there's a beach, and obviously new people are going to be coming as well. New NPCs, there probably is going to be some new shops. And of course, eventually, I'm sure you can live here. I read something about it on the, the website. Oh, there's a little pond here as well. That eventually, yeah, you can live here, which will be awesome. So there we go. That has been this month's mod showcase for November. This popular, trending, hottest mods right now for Stardew Valley. This has not been a theme. This has just been some random mods that are popping off right now on the website of Nexus Mods. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button. Let me know in the comment which one of your mods out of the whole list in the video is your favorite. Are you going to be installing any of them or? wanting to play them yourself they are super fun i love mods they add a lot more to the game oh what's going on here so yeah in december just before christmas i will be doing another mod showcase and we'll try and find lots of christmas themed or festive mods for that one we did the october the spooky ones as well if you haven't checked that one out i recommend you do it was very good we installed loads of spooky halloween mods you can check that out with the little i button in the top right or there'll be a link in the description as well and all of these mods are listed in today's video will also be down below in the description to a link to the website to download and install them yourself but that is all we've got time for thank you all so much for watching make sure you stay safe and healthy and i'll catch you on the next video
Bye-bye, guys.